Well, what's up, people? Jonathan Wiseman here with another episode of The Grit. Today, I got David and Jenny Leonetti from the iconic Leonetti Graphics in Mo City. Do you consider it Mo City? I know you're in Mo City or Sugar Land. Missouri. Mo City. Missouri City. Yeah. Missouri, I'm sorry. I'm ghetto sometimes. <laughs> She's like, Missouri City. <laughs> Anyhow, we got David and Jenny here. We're going to talk about Leonetti Graphics, um, where it started, where it's going. But first, I want to thank y'all for coming on the show. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to be fun. I used to be in the t-shirt business many, many moons ago. I'm curious to uh, learn more myself about where the, the business has gone and technology. I know we were talking a little bit earlier, and you were saying, you know, what we used to use X-Acto knives for now, you yeah. just push a button and it makes it happen. So I'm excited to learn a little bit more about that. Uh, but first, what I want to do is I kind of want to take it back to the beginning and learn how you got into the business. Because I know, Jenny, you started the business many moons ago. What did you tell me? 92? 1992. Nin wow. Long time ago. <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> nah, well, the business is old. Yeah. And it is iconic in this area. I know you do business with everybody out here. And I know the following out there and everybody in Missouri City Sugar Land wants to hear this story. And we're going to dive into that. And then, David, we're going to bring you on a little bit later on, Good. hear how you joined up with the company and dive right into that. Sounds but cool. let's take it back to the beginning, Jenny. Tell me how it was that you got started in the t-shirt business. Where did it all generate from? Well, I was married to Donald Leonetti, and we started a graphics company out of our little apartment. Um, and it started with a teacher asking him, hey, can you print t-shirts? And being the business entrepreneur that he is, he lied and said, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so we just kind of did all the research to figure out where we could buy the shirts and how to do the artwork and figured it out. So you just started out of a home office? Yes, based, a little tiny apartment. Um, we found a screen printer that we contracted out all of our uh, jobs to and it just spread word of mouth. We never advertised anything. It just led to job after job after job. That's amazing. Yeah. So you started that by contracting out to a screen printer. Yes. And did you do the artwork in house as well? We did. We spent many nights at Kinko's cutting and pasting and drawing. And we were talking about the exacto knife back then. You had to cut the different colors and layers. And so I would be up till two in the morning cutting layers for all the different colors you print on a shirt so y'all ran it out of the house or the apartment yeah to start off you did the artwork in-house yes and then i know there's a process of screening did y'all handle that or did you let the print shop handle that we let the print shop handle that okay so y'all were designers and sales reps yes closing deals and then farming it out after doing the design yes so how did y'all so the first business came from somebody asking if y'all could do that yep and i've been in that position where people have asked me if i could do something i said yes and had to go figure it out and i think that's what a lot of people in business do having that entrepreneur mindset yeah yeah for sure it you know it's you can if you can give someone something that they need and realize that there's a lot of people out there that need that. You could definitely create a whole business around that. Absolutely. And that's what we did. So. And you never had to do any marketing for the business? The phone just started ringing after that one job? Yes. Yeah, so uh, when Donald was living, because he was a natural born salesperson, and he just knew how to get out there and um, network with people. And it didn't matter where we went, a restaurant or the movies or anywhere, he would become best friends with the person next to him and before i knew it he had sold him t-shirts before we'd leave the room you know that's amazing yeah so how long was it until y'all decided to take it from the home office and move into a business location how many years did that take what, about five years because my son he was a baby when we got our first office uh we were still contracting the printing at that time um and so the t-shirt still piled up in my living room with my son crawling all around him. I was just telling him a story. I walked in and my son was sitting on top of these tall boxes. <laughs> I'm like, how did you get up there? But um, yeah, it was uh, still out of the home. It was just a little office space that we rented. Uh, and we actually hired our first person back then to do the books and everything for us. 
So it just started with the office space, still contracting all the work out. Yes. And y'all doing a little bit of the design in-house. Yes. And I would think that you do that so that people are coming to the office instead of your house to pick up shirts. Did y'all deliver prior to that or did you let them come pick them up? Donald, well, we let people come to the house to pick, we let people come to the house to pick them up, but he loved delivering the shirts in person because he liked that personal one-on-one with each of the customers and we would spend many Saturdays just driving around town talking to people and giving them their shirts that's awesome yeah. did y'all do the tournaments as well what kind of tournament I know back in the day we used to go to set up shop at tournaments like at softball tournaments baseball tournaments set up a table and sell pre-printed shirts that we have did y'all ever play with that at all we never did we mainly um our bit the only thing where we went and set up was the Italian festival okay. uh, Donald's Italian so we had a big connection there and so we designed a bunch of shirts for that and we set up eventually we just let them sell them and we print them for them sure um, what other uh, products did y'all print on besides t-shirts uh, or, or should I say apparel did y'all do embroidery at that time or did, was it a while till you brought that on it was a while till we brought in embroidery but um Once we figured out how to do that, then now it's a big chunk of our business. And we also print signs in-house and do a lot of sign work as well. Real cool. How long was it until you said in-house? How long was it until you got out of that small office and contracted it out? Or do you remember what type of volume you were doing in sales when you finally decided, maybe Donald decided, when it was time to quit giving somebody else that business. And it's like, okay, let's get the extra space, the equipment, and and bring it all in-house. To be honest, when I had my son is when I became a stay-at-home mom, and Donald took it over. Um, I really wasn't working with a company at that time. And so he would just kind of, I'd drive around with him, and he found this old fire station in Missouri City that they were... um, I guess you could bid on it to buy it and it was disgusting on the inside of it but he saw the vision there and uh won the bid and um he that's where we had our first production is when we moved into the fire station in missouri city i love that building by the way i've been there i've had my eye on it i actually saw it up for sale recently i don't know if it still is or not it is if you'd like to buy it i'll have to sell it to you (laughs) it's too too rich for my blood (laughs) but i love the location it's funny i've been looking at that location and y'all have always been there obviously i live in the neighborhood so uh, I've saw it go on the market. So I even told my wife one day, I was like, I want that building. It's amazing. And I love what you did to the place. Inside is fucking phenomenal. I yeah, love it. That's It's pretty amazing that if you could have seen what it was before, it was no. like <laughs> waterbed was in there. A waterbed? <laughs> I guess that's where the firemen say, but it was oh, like, yeah, I didn't sure. want to touch anything. <laughs> I don't blame you. But now it just has a really cool vibe to it. And, and so you're selling it. Do you have multiple locations now? We own a warehouse in Stafford, Texas, so uh, we're going to build out the part over there that we don't use to become our office so we can be in one location. It'll just make it easier on everything. Sure, I can everything. imagine. <laughs> I can imagine those yeah. pains. And I know you've referenced your husband quite a bit. Yes. <clears throat> you've done it in the past tense. Why don't you tell me a little bit why you're referring to Donald in the past tense? Okay, in uh, 2014, uh, my husband was murdered in a poker game. Um, There was a poker game in Stafford that was in the middle of a robbery, and he walked in unbeknownst to him that that was going on and caught one of the guys by surprise, so he was holding him, and then one of the other uh, robbers shot him in the back of the head and killed him instantly. So Sorry to hear that. I've heard many versions or a few different versions of it out there. And that's why I wanted to ask you directly. And that way we could put it out there and set it, let people know what the deal was. And David, did you know Donald prior to this? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've known Donald since I was six years old. Wow. I'm I'm 38 right now. So he was uh, my next door neighbor growing up. So Donald was like a big brother to me. Tell me more about that. Oh, let's see. We moved to Quail Valley. Yeah. 90. 96 and donald's mother was was our neighbor at the time and she still is neighbors with my parents so donald you know as a kid involved me in everything he was doing whether it was throwing the football on thanksgiving day or playing basketball with his friends um always involved me in everything he did so um 
growing up, but he was just always a part of my life. Uh, he'd always try and get me involved in some new money making scheme. Um, <laughs> you know, one at one time, I think he wanted to start a, a lawn lawn care group, uh, something you know, lawn maintenance. Uh, that didn't pan out, but he always wanted me to come work for him at Lee and Eddie, and it just never worked out. It just you know, growing up, you don't want to mix business with sure. friendship, and sure. so I always kind of let that play a big hand in my life, and um, and then one thing led to another, and Jenny Jenny uh, approached me at one point and. And uh, I couldn't turn it down at then, so so that's why I'm at Leonetti now. Well, when Donald passed away in that horrible, I mean that's messed up. Yeah. It's and that game room was around for a while. I know he had been going there for a while. Is that right? I th- I think so. He liked to play at different places. I love poker, and, and when you run in the poker circles, and back then it was all underground because it wasn't legal yet. And it's I don't even know what the the laws are now about where we get to go play legally with. Uh, security there Uh, everybody kind of runs in the same circles and talks about that how did that affect you how did that affect the business at that time if he was the face of the company how do you bounce back from that what do you immediately do what happened um I have I had a really great guy on staff there that um helped kind of maintain everything um and You know, I was kind of shut down for probably a good year mentally, um, but I'd still go in the office and I I made a point to like not go in there and just start making changes and acting like I'm the new boss. And I just really kind of sat there and observed everything. And slowly I I kind of inserted my bossness, if you (laughs) want to call it that. And so with every right. Yeah. I. Cause I wanted to, I wanted people to be on my side and, and get behind me. And, um, I mean, we, we'd been doing really well, um, keeping everything together, still making really good sales. Um, but it's been interesting the last five years with Donald not being there, um, seeing sales kind of slowly go down and it's really cause we're just missing that good salesman piece of the puzzle we had all the other pieces like our production we're still putting out a really good shirt um just the staff that i have are really amazing and so that's why i look to david because i know he is more in the industrial field but he's got a lot of experience in sales and that's what i needed so so how was it that you reached out to david (laughs) how did that go down and what was your first reaction I, Jenny, you know, like I said, Donald had always come to me to ask me to work for him. And it was always a no, I I can't do it. (laughs) We're just too close of friends. And, and then Jenny came to me one day and, and I think we're at, I I organized a barbecue cook-off in Siena Plantation. And I think Jenny, uh, at our second one, she kind of picked up where Donald left off. And she was like, you're going to come to work for me one day. And that was, that was Donald. I mean, Donald said that to me all the time. So Jenny said it to me, it, it kind of rang different in my ears. Um, so I went and, you know, pondered it for a little while and I had been in sales all my life. Um, you know, I've been in oil and gas for eight years and then uh, was recruited over into the uh, fleet management world. Okay. And I did sales for numerous years for them and then became a consultant. And when Jenny approached me, I was in a role that, you know, I was kind of tired of the big corporate world um you know you're just a number in a lot of these companies and i got tired of it um so jenny approached me and and i had been thinking about getting out of out of the the corporate world at that at that point she got me at a, at a really good time and so she said let's just meet up and let's talk about things see if it makes sense um we talked and uh, i left the conversation with jenny knowing that she had to make a really tough decision you know it was um at the at the point it was um Paul Price, who was running the business, and he was a great guy. You know, he ran the business with Donald for 24 years. I think wow. Paul was with the business, so he 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 had his hand in everything. He knew the business very well, um, and and Jenny had a very hard decision to make. Um, my job with the business, obviously, I knew from the get go, was to try and increase sales. So. I've been there for about nine months now, um, brought on some of my clients from the oil and gas field, but, um, back to when Jenny approached me, it was, it was, um, it was the right time, right place. I've got two young kids at home. I wanted to see them more. I didn't want to travel as much. And, uh, 
I tell everybody now taking the job was the best thing I've done. I wake up and I tell my wife, this is the best decision that I made. I've, I wake up and I love going to work. I never thought I was going to have a job like that. Sure. So, um, it's really cool. Um, you know, I love working there. The people we work with are great and, um, you know, just, just looking forward to a, a good future with Leonetti. Yeah. It's always yeah. lovely when you can get a job and it doesn't seem like a job and you love what you do. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And it, you know, it is every day I wake up and it's, you know, I throw in jeans and a, and a fishing shirt and I, I roll into work and, you know, Gina runs our desk for us. She's, she's always giving me a hard time. She's a fun person to work with. Same with Kelly. we got two great artists that, you know, they helped me. You know, I knew nothing about this. You know, I come from oil and gas or the fleet world. I don't know anything about designing shirts except for watching Donald all my life. Yeah. Um, so they, they really showed me around. They had a lot of patience, still have a lot of patience. <laughs> So uh, it's been a lot of fun. Gotcha. Well, I appreciate you sharing that with us. And I want to dive more onto the business side of things for other aspiring entrepreneurs, people looking to get in this business. Um, you know, now with DTG, direct to garment, and uh, a lot of other technology that's coming out, uh, as well as I have a lot of people come to me quite often saying, I want to start a t shirt company or a t shirt line. And I did that 20 something years ago. Uh, for me, it was the dumbest shit I ever did. Uh, but when you're in your <laughs> teen years and having fun in a, a t-shirt print shop in the garage, it made sense to me at that time. Um, you know, let's talk about how difficult the business is, not just from getting the sale, closing the sale, building those relationships to the production side, the quality control. What is the process that goes into actually from the time somebody walks in the door to them getting their shirts in a box because who knows what people think these days of what it takes to make a shirt. And I remember when we used to charge 12 to $15 a shirt, they thought we were crazy. You know, they're thinking they go buy them at Target or wherever, super cheap, or they see uh, a white plain t-shirt on the rack for three bucks, and they're like, well, why are you charging 15 to buy it? So what is the process uh, of, let's talk about silkscreen first. What is the process that that T-shirt goes through, and how many employees have to touch that shirt before it's a final product in a box? Well, uh, it starts with just having having a conversation with the customer um, and figuring out what design they want. That can be really easy, or it can be really difficult it can depending be a nightmare. on the customer. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> so we have some customers you will put together some artwork for them, and they'll love it say go for it and then some that make like 30 changes and you're finally like okay we can't do anything to make you happy clearly but yeah um, and well it eats into your profit margin yes if you keep on providing new designs so let me ask you that at what point or how many revisions do you give a client if you're designing the artwork and you're not getting it right or they're not approving it in the first shot or two is there a certain point that you start to charge them art fees we have started doing that so we say after like the third revision then we're going to have to start charging you just because it yeah you're right it eats because we i have to pay the artist for absolutely so it starts with sales so we got a sales rep that's one person next person is the artist artist plus you have a, a project manager whether that's you or somebody else on staff yeah so once that art's approved what's the next phase where does it go from there uh they print out there's that press of the button I was talking about. They print out the films on this machine and um, our, my production manager, Michael, uh, run it over to our shop. And then we have a guy who burns the image into the screen. Mm-hmm. Um, and then from there, once the screen's ready to go, um, then we have usually two printers on a machine and then someone catching the shirts out coming out of the dryer. So it's a, quite a few people that it takes it takes so, about 10 people to yes. run a process <laughs> it does so yeah. and just from myself being in the business and i wanted to hear from you first because i didn't know if the process has changed except before now they're pushing buttons to burn screens back in the day it was a whole different art not to burn the screens to print the screens you know and those machines were expensive i don't know if they still are but we used to spend like 20 grand on, on a film press just to output the film it was crazy how expensive it was the film's still pretty expensive but not like it it used to be so well that's good so the process goes from sales to a production manager uh who's our uh, a project manager who's running the process you have artists you have somebody uh, a designer does your artist also do all the separations they 
Yes. The way they uh, do the artwork in the computer program they're using, they automatically print the separations with okay. the push of the button. So. Wow. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so back in the day, I had one artist that would be our designer, and I had a separate artist that would separate the art for film. Yeah. It was crazy. It was too. So glad to know that. And now it goes to somebody in the print shop who's going to output the film, produce the screen, and then you have three people running the press. Yes. Two printing, one catching. Yes. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why you pay what you pay when you get t-shirts. <laughs> and that's the other reason why it's a lot cheaper to buy 144 shirts than it is 20 shirts. Yep. And because of that process and the setup of outputting film, burning screens, graphic designers, film outputters, presses, catchers, it doesn't make sense for people to produce 12 shirts. So if you're looking to buy 12 shirts, silk screen printed, and they say no, or they're charging you 25 bucks a shirt, there's a reason for it. So deal with it. <laughs> people have bills to pay and people to feed, so deal with it. So let's talk about what other processes that y'all are currently doing. I know we mentioned embroidery. Yes, uh, we do a lot of embroidery, mostly hats. That's our biggest thing, but we do polos and fishing shirts like he's wearing a lot of those. Which is more profitable, silk screen printing or embroidery? Because <laughs> when I was doing it, it, we never made money on embroidery. We actually lost money doing embroidery, but we wanted to keep our clients happy. Is the technology these days, has that changed enough to where there's margins? We, we are able to have pretty good margins on that, or we wouldn't even be doing it. Sure. Yeah. But we get quite a bit, like we've got some... One company that orders like 6,000 hats with us. So, wow. um, you know, stuff like that. That's what we pride our bread and butter on, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, digitizing the logo has gotten a lot cheaper. It seems like everybody and their mother is digitizing now. Okay. So that used to be a pretty costly expense. I remember. When I first joined on nine months ago, we, you know, digitizing was costing 65 to $95, just depending on the complexity of the design. Now it's dropped down to like... 35 bucks. Wow. So digitizing is really, uh, you know, it's, it's increased our margins, um, because we're not able, to, you know, that was a direct pass through. So, um, you know, that's another place where you can make some money is the digitizing fee, because honestly, I've got guys calling me left and right saying, Hey, do you have any digitizing work for me? And let me do 10 free ones for you. So that's an opp opportunity for us to make a little money. Okay. You're going to do 10 of them. That's going to save me 350 bucks. If you sure. charge me $35 a piece, I'm still charging my clients the $35 fee just because that's we, our margin. That's, that's, that's our setup. That's so, what you're in business to do to exactly, make money. And people exactly. don't understand that and then go to somebody else. That's right. And get <laughs> t-shirts, right? <laughs> and they do. And then they always come back. To they us. always come back, don't they? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, he did. It fell off my shirt. So from the digitizing aspect, prices drop down. Is that from technology shift or is that from uh, market saturation? I think it's market saturation. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I get, like I said, I, I probably get four calls a week from someone new. Really? Saying, hey, can we digitize anything for you? So that's just people looking for work that want to digitize. Absolutely. Wow. So I'll, I'll always tell them, yeah, you know, some guys will offer me 10 free. Someone will do one, you know. And, and so, you know, I always want to try them out. If they do great work, you know, then we'll take them on. But right now we kind of go, we use one or two guys on a consistent basis that digitize for us. But, you know, we're always trying new people. Do y'all do puff embroidery and all types of embroidery? Was it like called the tackle 3D? twill and yeah, 3D? We, do, we don't do the tackle twill, but we do the 3D like on this hat where it's okay. raised a little yep. bit. Is there a piece of foam that goes in there? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I never understood the process um, until actually just four or five months ago, I uh, was asking, how do we do the 3D? And so I went and watched it because I had never seen it done. I saw the regular embroidery machines, but then, yeah, so they just take a piece of foam, cut it to the length that they need, affix it to the hat, stitch over it, and then run it through a dryer, and it sucks it up. Ah, uh, the dryer burns it off mm -hmm. or sucks it off? Yep. Yeah. That's cool. I think yeah. we used to have to cut it back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> Technology, I love it. <laughs> so DTG, direct yes. to garment. A lot of people are hearing about that. A lot of people are talking about it. Because uh, that was one of the things that I never liked about silkscreen. And that was back in the day when you would get a silkscreen sh printed shirt and it would be a thick layer, you know, because you would put all the different layers on top of each other on the design. You're wearing the shirt in the sun. It's thick. It's hot. The sun's burning you. It's not like that anymore. Yeah. It's definitely not near as bad as it was. No. no. And 
direct to garment now is a new process where these printers are taking full color designs to where you don't have to deal with all of the processes of burning screens, outputting film, having three people on a press. It's kind of like a print it out of your office printer and, and make it happen. Do y'all use direct to garment? Absolutely. That's actually one of the things when I joined on with Jenny was um, she came to me and said she'd had this idea uh, that she wanted to start a uh, kind of a, a branch off of Leonetti Graphics and she already had a name for it and she was real excited to tell me about it called Leo to Go. So that's it was, cool. It, a cute design, cute name, uh, and there was a product out there that was a direct to garment printer. So we went to a, one of the shows in Houston and checked them out. Uh, we fell in love with a, it's called the Epson 2100 and literally a Epson printer that's designed to print on t-shirts. Yeah. So it's a quite a big investment. If anybody's thinking about getting into it, you're going to be spending probably 20 K close to $20,000 yeah. because you got to pay for the, the you hear this itself. Hector Hector wanted to start a direct to garment company. Sorry to interrupt. Oh, yeah. Hector came to me a few months ago and said, Johnny, I want to get a direct to garment printer and, and print some t-shirts and selling he's a dj if you did yeah of course you don't know that <laughs> he's a dj he goes all around the world and he djs different events and he wants to you know have some shirts that he sells and of course just for fun uh, like, and he's well you can come to us and we'll be happy to make your shirts for it's you. a lot cheaper that's what i told him <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's going to be a lot cheaper just to hire somebody and pay somebody to do it than it is to try to get the equipment and do it yourself right. like you said so you, a 20k investment just on the printer yeah you got the printer and the package that we bought they had a show special so we got the printer we got the um the speed treater which is a treatment machine and then a heat press to press the ink to heat the ink to the shirt um so the process of that is is um it sounds easy you know if you uh some people think you were just oh we're just hitting a button and printing a shirt it's actually um, more time consuming than setting up a job and printing it I, mean, wow. I, I wouldn't say it's more time consuming but it is it is a lot more time consuming than people imagine you, you've got to take the shirt you still got to put the artwork in the artist's hands they got to make a rendering send it to the computer that we have linked with the printer um, once that happens then we have a guy that comes in he takes the t-shirt runs it through the speed treater um, gets the chemicals on it takes it over to the heat press he presses the chemicals to the shirt then he takes it to the printer sets up the job hits the go button it prints the shirt comes out depending on how much ink you're laying down it's either done on the first pass or you can send it through on another pass to drop more ink on it to make it more vibrant at that point once he's done takes the shirt back over to the press lays it down puts heat to it puts more heat to it and then it's done yeah. so the whole process even if you're doing one shirt i mean you're talking you know, from the time that the artworks is in the guy's hand to print the shirt, it's still taking him, you know, seven minutes per shirt. Yeah, so. it's, I've seen the process yeah. and it's tedious. Yeah. And there's, you do have to have a certain skill set to make that work. Right. And there's still a few people involved. I think that for the audience that wants to know the difference is the reason why you want, you can get ones and twos and threes is because you don't have to output film and you don't have to burn screens and you don't have to set up the printer. And it doesn't take three people on a silk screen print, uh, a press to make that happen. So time wise, it's about the same. The difference is you don't have all of the overhead, the extra 200 bucks worth of overhead. So that's why there's no minimums. Typically most t-shirt print shops and correct me if I'm wrong, they're able to absorb or eat a lot of those overhead costs in the first 24 shirts. Right. Um, when you set up large silk screen pressing and you don't have all that setup expense on T DTG. Right. Exactly. The, the ink is more expensive, uh, by, by a lot. So you're going to be paying a lot for ink. Um, the ink also, the, the quality of ink is, is not gonna, it's not, it's not going to be as nice as the ink that you're getting straight off a of screen print. So, um, whereas you might get 75 washes out of screen printing plus on a, on a direct garment, you know, I'm seeing images starting to fade, you know, um, after 30 washes. Really? Yeah. So the, it's just not there yet. Um, I, I think the process they they they'll probably develop some nicer ink for it that will last longer. But right now it's like a boutique shirt. You know, people will come to us and say, Hey, I want to put his face on my shirt for his birthday party. Sure. Or, you know, I'm going on a cruise. It's a shirt they're going to wear once or twice and then probably never put it on again unless they're just hanging out around the house. Yeah, souvenir it in the closet. Exactly, exactly. So, um, 
that was the main reason why we got the machine was to keep business in house. Um, Jenny was noticing that a lot of people were coming in asking for one or two shirts. And, and so when she told me that it kind of didn't make sense to me because I know our competitors were doing it. And what I didn't like seeing was someone come in and say, Hey, I need one shirt. I need two shirts. And we're turning them around saying we can't help you, but our competitor can. Yeah. What we don't know is that, you know, the competitor, Sally, competitor is going to get them on the hundred exactly. unit shirt. Yeah. Sally a month might later. come in, uh, you know, for, for one shirt. And then three weeks from now, we don't know. Sally may, may own a company that has a thousand employees. She needs a thousand shirts. So it'll take a long time to get your money back on a, on a $20,000 investment if sure. you're printing one shirt at a time, but you can't put a number on the clients that you're keeping in house by doing that. Yeah, absolutely. So, or, or keeping the quality control in house to where you're in charge of it instead of one of your competitors. Exactly. And you know, they're trying to steal that customer once they get them. Oh yeah. What type, when you see shirts that are printed all over, you know, cause I know that the frame is 12 by 12 or 14 by 14, whatever it is in the silk screen or TDG, what is it? Or how do, when people do or have full color shirts, what is that called? Is that a service that y'all offer? How does that work? I'm just curious. Are you referring to like sublimated fabrics? Yeah. I have no idea. It's like, <laughs> looks like it's sew, sewn together after the image is No, it just looks like when you see t-shirts that are, have print on them, but it goes all the way around the shirt. Or yeah, that's sublimation. Sleeve. Okay. Yeah. How does that process work? You know, it's a, uh, Jenny could probably speak to it better than I can because we're not doing it. Well, I somehow you transfer the image onto a type of paper i've never actually seen it done a paper and then you heat press the image into the fabric and then they sew the garment after the image is imprinted on the fabric that's what i thought and i just didn't know if it was still the same so basically when the garment is still just one big slab of cotton they print it over and over and over and then have yeah. a die cut and cut it and sew it right and there's some people you know there's some of our competitors competitors are doing it um a lot of a lot of people are outsourcing to China and Mexico yeah. for it. Uh, I bet they won't be outsourcing to China no, right now. Probably, probably not. Probably <laughs> sticking to Mexico. Um, you know, I was just talking to a guy. A lot of baseball teams do it. Um, fishing shirts. You know, I was just at the um, the Houston fishing show this past week and and uh, just trying to gain some business there. And we're talking to some of the guys. And um, you know, screen printing would be great. But then they start talking about sublimation, and I I get to talking to them about it, and it sounds like a big headache you know they're that sounds like they it. don't have a in texas there's not a lot of guys that are great at sublimation so anybody looking to get into sublimation texas might be a good market for you um their closest that they're outsourcing to is either mexico or denver right now i don't know you know what what's in the water in denver but i know what what's what's up there so yeah you know um i i just we haven't gotten into it and it's not something that's really on our radar because we we honestly y'all are busy enough without it yeah. And it's less than 1%. You know, if, if, if someone, our business, it's, it's less than 1% of what people are asking for. So to us, it's not, not something that we should put on gotcha. the radar. But now y'all do do direct to garment, so you can do the ones and twos yes. to keep everybody happy. What other services do you offer? Uh, we also do vinyl graphics. Um, we do a lot of uh, company trucks to put the logo and uh, information on them. There's companies that will, it seems like every week they'll come and drop a new truck off and we just automatically go stick it on there while the guys sit and wait. And um, so we've gotten really good at that. We do get asked a lot about wrapping vehicles. Mm -hmm. And so two of the guys that work for me, I'm gonna go send them to get trained on that. So oh, really cool. I can stop telling people no. <laughs> when you're ready for that, let me know. I yeah. will. <laughs> yeah. I think my truck might be the uh, the test subject, but I was going to say well, some of my employee cars can be the test subject as <laughs> yeah. well. Yeah, that's a. I've got a. Uh, I've got a uh, mega cab, and the first thing I did when I went to Leonetti was, well, let, we need to splash Leonetti all over this thing. Sure. Everybody asked me why. You know, why are you going to do that to your truck? I said, I don't care. It's my. It's my truck. You know, I, I love my truck, but I love Leonetti better. So I, you know, if someone's driving and. I don't know how much business I've gotten off of it, but I have got three or four people ask me about it in a parking lot. Like, hey, y'all do embroidery or y'all do stickers like that? Yeah. It still works. Yeah. I mean, people are still wrapping vehicles all day. And when you get into the wraps, you can even do the solid color wraps yep. where they want to make it matte or yeah. Yeah. whatever color they want. What else you got going on? So we're doing embroidery, silk screen, you're doing vinyls. Um, y'all are doing signs and yes. banners? Yes, we do 
signs and banners, a lot of those uh, golf tournaments, um, school functions, yeah. things like that. We just did a gigantic banner for one of the high schools, um, a 20 foot by uh, 24 foot banner. Damn. We, try, we, we like to roll out all the banners before we pass them off to our clients just to make sure that, you know, quality's good. Where'd you roll that out at? And we couldn't. We rolled it out. <laughs> we have our lobby. It wouldn't even fit in our lobby. And if it was not raining that day, I'd have rolled it out in the parking lot. But we sent it over to them, and, you know, it looked great. But it was the biggest banner I think we've done. It, but it, How do you do that? It was just piece by piece. And, it, you know, it was a breakaway banner for the football players to run through. Okay. So it actually ended up being four sections that were pieced together by velcro okay so i don't know how they're going to hold it up it's going to take i don't know if the cheerleaders are going to be able to do it but yeah have to get some be pretty holes on the ground. Yeah. yeah hopefully it's not windy when they do it <laughs> yeah oh wow might I turn mean, into a parachute oh yeah that's big i didn't even think about that yeah that yeah. thing will fly away but yeah banners are big business we've got one guy who that's all he does all day every day is he does decals banners and signs and he stays pretty busy with it okay so we can get decals from you as well yes. absolutely perfect any specialty add stuff to you like if you do giveaways anything you can put your logo on we can we can get that for you yeah we've tried to become a one-stop shop okay so well, y'all have i mean uh, it's, it's all there anything you know and that's what i that's what we tell people anything you put your name on we can do it if we haven't done it before we're going to learn well, there you go. What's your favorite thing about the business, Jenny? Um, the people. Uh, you know, this was Donald's dream, I think, t- to do this big T-shirt company, and I just inherited it. But I just love, like, the people that I work with, and I love our customers. They're just always so so sweet to us, and it's, that's, that's amazing. part I like. And I know we saw the when Donald passed. I know we saw the whole community come together and do all kinds of amazing things. Uh, it was really, really horrible moment, but it was great to see how everybody came together to make things happen. What's yeah. been your biggest woe about this since you started nine months ago? What's been the scariest moment for you or that oh shit moment? I would say, you know, no matter how successful Lee and Eddie is, um, we're still a small business. So um, any kind of... Um, employment i've had in the past i've never been privy to the books you know i was always just a sales guy i didn't i didn't know what what the money situation looked like um you know being at lee and eddie you know we're comfortable but you're always got to keep an eye on the books you know you always got to watch and say okay payrolls this week how are we looking uh man we put in a big shirt order uh we got to pay our vendors how's that looking uh, it's just a new piece of the pie for me it's just something that i've never been able to look at before and now i look at it every day um it makes a difference when you yeah. look at those P&Ls. Yeah. It lets you know real quick. <laughs> well, yeah. And, it's and you know, Donald was, and Jenny as well, very, they're such a charitable family. Um, the amount of, I, I, I kind of took it for advantage, uh, advantage before. I always came to Donald, you know, if so, I needed something. And I always offered to pay, but Donald would just give it to me. And Jenny would just give it to me. You know, um, like I said, I, I organized this cook-off in Siena and, and before I came to work for Leonetti, I always hit up Jenny for stuff for the cook-off. And she donated, you know, last year, 300 shirts, wow. signs, banners. And I never put a price to it. It was always just, oh, thanks. That's really nice. And, and along we went. And then now that I'm a part of it, I see like, okay, 300 shirts, the amount of people that are touching it, what we pay for the shirts, you know, the amount of ink that we put on them, the signs, the banners, the time that we've used on it. That's, that's a big contribution. Yeah. That's and, a couple grand. Yeah. I mean, you, you think, you know, Donald and Jenny, they're just, they, they, I mean, very charitable people. Well, and, Jenny, I'm doing a crawfish boil in a couple of weeks. Let me know what you need. I'm Donald. calling you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For sure. There's a reason why there's an elementary school named after Donald. Everybody knows how, how charitable he was and what he did for the community. Um, Jenny is is no different than Donald. They're they're cut out of the same cloth as far as that that side of their life goes. Um, you know, they're they're two of the most charitable people I've ever known. So, they they took care of the community, and the community is taking care of them. I love it. I love it. So, what's next for Leonetti? You know, I think we've we've had some discussions. Um, you know, once once we get everything in one house, we our big project right now is selling the fire station, taking everything, consolidating under one roof. That way we can kind of keep an eye on everything going on at the shop. You can find, you know, um, more cost effective. You know, if, if we have a space that we're not using in the warehouse that we're paying for, 
it just makes sense to move in. Sure. So after that step, there's been some talks about um, trying to learn how to franchise. If someone comes to us and says, hey, we want to open up a, a print shop, um, is, there, is there something that we can do? Uh, Jenny, another one, Jenny's got visions, and that's what, that's what <laughs> part of the thing that makes her great with this company. She's Have you always been the it. brains behind everything? <laughs> I'm not saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> I think in big elephants. So a lot of times yeah. like, when I volunteer for things, I'll tell them, like I come up with all these big ideas. I'm like, you, you might have to scale them down, but I just, that's how my brain works. So it always that's good. <laughs> I mean, how do you eat a big elephant? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I think franchising will be um, the next big animal that we look at. Um, you know, my job is to make sure that the company does, does well and we can, continue printing shirts for Fort Bend and, and Jenny comes to me with new ideas and, and I, I haven't heard one yet that has been crazy. Um, they're, they're good ideas. So when she came to me and said, what do you think about us franchising a business? It makes sense. You know, our competitors are doing it. You know, why can't we? Sure. So, um, so that, I think that'll be the next step. Gotcha. Yeah. If anybody's looking to get in this business, Jenny, what would be the biggest one word of advice or a little bit of input that you'd give somebody do's or don'ts? Wow. Um, do's or don'ts. Uh, don't stay up till three in the morning working on artwork because <laughs> you'll be exhausted. No, I'm kidding. Um, I don't, I think the most important thing is you have to build relationships with people, people in your community, um, all around you because typically the people that come and use Leonetti graphics are people that have a connection to us and they're sure. very loyal and um, you know Donald started out managing a video store in Missouri City and he knew every single customer's name without having to look them up knew what kind of movies they liked he just had that relationship with them was it movies and munchies it was it, right video down the street plus. Video, video plus, plus. okay and but he was started there in high school and all of those same customers that he had are still customers today with leonetti graphics i love it and every day well not every day every week i have someone walk in and tell me how much donald meant to them and just what a great guy he was and to me if you want a successful business it's all about building those relationships with people i love it and for the people out there looking for t-shirts how quick is your turnaround how quick can you get shirts out if somebody walks in today and says i rush order i gotta have it done how quick can you make that happen for them yeah i mean we're at 10 business days uh, under 10 business days right now it's all depends on what time of the year but even our busiest time we're still trying to keep everything under 10 business days Good. you need one shirt like off the leo to go those are three business days Gotcha. I've pulled some off for the next day, though. Just saying. <laughs> Just saying. I can make it happen. Well, I know y'all have pulled some off for, I think it was my daughter's dance team, that y'all pulled it off in two or three days for yeah. them. They call it, oh, here's another Jenny job, but so That's what right. I say goes. Because Jenny it. approves it, and then y'all got to figure out how to execute. Yep. That's right. <laughs> I love it. Well, before we get out of there, anything you want to add, brother? No, I mean, I just, you know, um, Lean Indie Graphics has been here for 28 years. You know, we're not going anywhere. Um, I'm, I'm trying to diversify the business. So anybody's out there that's looking for T-shirts, a lot of our business is, is, is based on schools. So um, we want to try and uh, it's, it's very, it's kind of like the oil and gas right now. It's up and down, up and down. We want to try and smooth that line and, and get it to where it's just always at an even kill. So if anybody's out there, oil and gas, churches, um, medical field, looking for t-shirts we're here there it is well i'm gonna put y'all's information on the podcast and the description all over the place ladies and gentlemen i appreciate y'all tuning in to another episode of the grit had david and jenny here with leonetti graphics leonetti graphics.com uh, if y'all got any value from this if you know them personally please click the share button subscribe to it and uh we're going to bounce out of here leonetti graphics.com appreciate y'all tuning in and we'll catch you on the next one take care guys